Welcome to TradeTheNBA.com. This is John's report. It's for the 26th of June. And, well, you know, we um, talked about the ABM and the breakdown as it was uh, taking place and that we could be, well, short below anywhere 7150 here, uh, 277150, uh, that we had the different little sections and we had been bought up between there. We were holding at the 76%. And then, um, as I was pointing out in the... Uh, video from yesterday where intraday we had uh, ended up with a white candle um, that really suggested that we could look for you know further weakness building into it then we opened up slightly lower and then once we got back to that 76 percent line right here the blue line that you see a lot of nothing distance between there and the next level of support so when I was posting um, my expectation, uh, I was thinking minus 50 was not out of line. Uh, could have even gotten worse uh, as we got towards the 50. Uh, we started to see uh, institutional guys because they're going to love that level uh, coming down a 50% retrace on it uh, time and time again. Uh, that doesn't mean that we aren't coming back to it because look, we still dip below the red line, which means that uh, we could potentially come back to that. When we look at the intraday, uh, we can see it now. A little bit stronger, uh, but you get a similar dip, not quite down as far with the Nasdaq. So the Nasdaq still held up better um, in general, but you can see a clear DOC spread, the spike up there, the huge drop of the shakeout all the way to negative territory uh, happening really fast, uh, comparatively speaking. Euro had a nice little bounce back still. Uh, within the buy signal here that it's had, it's had an improvement. Uh, we liked it from this dip to matching lows. It actually made a f brief dip a little bit, but uh, has been in a steady incline from the uh, higher DOC readings. And then obviously the uh, orange dip really added to that. Now it's still going to face trouble at that 23% level. So uh, it's going to have to continue, but uh, if that orange continues to rise really quick. Uh, the one we usually look for is the first dip of that orange is uh, uh, indication that it's going to continue to follow through. So I'll have to see if it's able to uh, muster the strength to do that. Um, TLT, a little bit of flight to quality, not a surprise. Uh, it faded a little bit uh, as the end of day rally happened wasn't all that extensive and of course uh, a little bit of uh, pullback in oil because of some of the fear attached to market drop but nothing on gold so no expectation of uh, uh, inflationary rise or move to uh, commodities here from that and it's been a series of days uh, well below the red line uh, throughout this uh, dip and we've been in a continuation mode for this short line god it goes you know, all the way back over here and it's just continued to uh, basically melt into nothingness. So can't even show the full because I'd have to shrink this so small it would be tiny. But here's what we were talking about from Friday's action uh, as we were ended up with the close coming down and then right in the post uh, 15 minute trade, we ended up with the white candle. So I was expecting a little bit further fade because it was below the 50. And sure enough, we opened lower to start the market and created a whole new level right up there at 52 and came across and then we produced gold and so every time we were popping to the 23 it was shorting not looking for a dip back down um, that was to the zero levels and then we finally got to the 23 here uh, under positive extreme so expected that to retrace so a little dip above the 23 was another opportunity to short and sure enough not only did we get to the lows we started a whole new shakeout run lower that produced the next um, white candle, which uh, that can just continue to fade quickly off that setup. And not a surprise, I mean, the shakeout was so deep that even if there was a little bit of a pop, it would have been an opportunity to attack it. Uh, so I had no expectation. As we get down here, I thought might have a chance at a little bit of a pop. We were getting uh, extremes that were higher. Uh, and it was also an improved uh, DOC readings right here, but we didn't get the orange dipping below until Right over here, we had these gold candles and then it started and then sure enough, we got a couple of red dots, which meant potential retrace to those points, plus the fact that it was gold below the 50%, which you look for, you know, somewhere in between the low to come back to, like usually I pick between, somewhere between the 23 and 0%. Um, and then further attacked it at the 38 right here. And then we rolled over and sure enough, the break again of the 23 uh, was another opportunity take advantage of it. So if we scroll forward into the day from that, we weren't done there. 
that came all the way back down to the zero line and then continued to collapse in there, which produced, uh, interestingly enough, a uh, blue candle, which is slightly bullish, but again, it literally didn't even get to zero level on the um, uh, shakeout here before it started to roll over. And then, of course, the cyan came. And that did produce a candle, white candle here, which was at uh, 2011. So that became another marker on a bounce up. And then we produced this one down here at 2709. So we had two of those, and then we had obviously dipped a little bit below that, but that produced a little bit of bullish. Again, we ended up with a positive, but this one actually had a little bit more legs, made it to the 50. Um, in my mind, that was just an opportunity to short again, and then of course it hit back both the 2000, uh, the 2011 number, and then also um, still had the expectation of the 209. So when the next pop came in here, as soon as it posted the little red uh, dot right there, just above the 61, um, shorted that one again and that drove all the way down to uh, the 2009 right over here and then started to make new lows on just a continually dropping shakeout. Uh, in 2004 we produced uh, another white candle but this time on a really strong dip of the uh, orange and well below the negative 20 where uh, you can see every time we get that you get at least some attempt at a spike so it was one of those where it's like okay uh, what can you prove? You know, you've got to get up to that 23 and then once you're able to get there, then you can begin to think that this might have a little bit more legs, but you know that even when it does, it's still going to come back, if not today and the next day. So if we fast forward a little bit, you can see it started to catch a little momentum, kept coming back to the 23, but finally made it over that 50 and on positive shakeout. And that was enough momentum with the cyan under red. And he actually had it even back over here. Um, even though it popped up briefly right there, it was still um, holding on to that. It did come back and retrace quite a bit of the uh, initial pop uh, move on that, but then it uh, caught enough oomph, but you can see it produced a whole lot of red and um, yellow, which just an extension of the uh, extreme histogram, but in dot form up above. And um, it did finally get a reset of the uh, steel uh, from this last dip right here, which kind of ended the uh, general downtrend uh, that had developed there. Uh, that's what you look for is that steel to come back below when it's been riding so far above for so long. Um, and so that gave me the idea that we would, might see a little bit more pop. So even in this pop though, we still ended up with the fairly decent retrace to the 50%. Still, um, we've retraced the 209. That's not necessarily the core, but the 204 sitting right there. I know it's 22 points away from it as it is right now. We're producing another set of positive extremes on that one and matching high levels, a little bit lower shakeout for now. Uh, though the shakeout isn't done rising, you do have sign underneath, so that could uh, bounce and elevate a little bit more, but that's the number I'm looking at. But now the other key I was looking at, if we flip back over here to the daily, just for purposes, that 61% line is 19 and a quarter. You got to respect those daily numbers. So we're above it right now at 2250, but a dip back down there happens to be the 61, 76% uh, at this particular point um, on the Morganacci lines right there. If you look at it, the 76 at 2719 and a quarter. So that represents that daily uh, matching line. So that's going to be a confluence. Below that, I think that, uh, you know, your bigger funds and that are going to be a little bit uh, less interested until you dip probably back to that 9550. But I think it looked like that once you get to 27, they were like interested in starting to jump in. So this was probably the early institutional buyers uh, buying that 50% or just prior to that 50% dip. Uh, and uh, even some short covering, taking advantage of that, because that's where we were getting the reset right here as we were coming back down towards that uh, secondary fill in the, the 2009 one from over here. And so then it printed a new one. So that becomes the next marker. So those are the ones I'll be watching again uh, right in there when we start to, and if we dip below that 19, um, you'll start to be able to play those lines in between, as well as the other Fibonacci's and the long and short algo, but um, becomes very powerful uh, to have those kind of expectations because you can really um, 
hold out more for the bigger runs. Um, I typically still will cover dips that go to the 50 for partial, but then I always leave something extra um, in case they dip below. And then even still, if they pop back up to it, they become nice opportunities to attack again uh, from a short setup. But it never hurts to see that even though we dipped uh, above the 50% uh, below the red line, which means that that's likely to become an attractive retrace right there. And then you see if you get that further breakdown and if it further breaks down, then I would expect to see that 204.75 hit again. So that's what I'll be looking at uh, for Tuesday's action. So this was quite nice to get a little bit more volatility bump. We're at the, almost the end of the month before 4th of July holiday and that. So, uh, you know, how much they have to want to, you know, pump back into this before new fund money comes in at the beginning of next month. Uh, remains to be seen at this particular point. It looks like there's still plenty of uh, distribution capability left. There just didn't seem to be a, um, I put it on the Skype chat about a Cerro Hedge article where they were talking about the liquidity looked awkward. Well, yeah, when whenever you see that, it just means that you get a little bit more exaggerated moves. And uh, in this particular case, uh, once selling starts, there just aren't any buyers. And then you threw in the fact that once we dip below that, uh, 76% line, there wasn't anything until the 61, and uh, that was a pretty decent range, and that's exactly what filled in most of it uh, completely until we got right back above it, above that 19 and a quarter, which you can see then became nice support uh, briefly when it broke below it again. Uh, they found a way to get it right back to it. So, always good to recognize some of those uh, dailies when they have confluence with uh, intraday, and uh, it's an effective way to. You know, gauge whether or not you can be a little bit more aggressive to a short side or have to respect uh, long moves that go back above it because um, that clearly is going to become a key factor. And certainly the 95 range, uh, anything between 95 and 27, I think because of uh, institutional love to buy daily 50% dips uh, become uh, attractive targets for them. So that's the long and the short of it. As always, though, I will put up more uh, relevant charts on the Skype chat. Trade well.